Hey, what's up guys? You guys have been asking me for this video. Finally, here it is. 31 members of the Mexican Army Elite Special Force Group, trained killers, started working as hired assassins, bodyguards, drug runners for the Gulf Cartel. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you'll miss nothing. And uh, you guys already know, right? If you are part of my... Let's put some gas in it and let's take it. Let's take a roll. We're going to Mexico. We're going to Tamaulipas and Monterrey today. And we're going to talk about one that's been, they've been asking for it for a while. Finally got around to it. The Setas. The Setas. The Setas days and of being like Mexico's most feared cartel. Uh, they might be over, but that does not mean that the name will fade away anytime soon. And it is likely that they'll continue to grow and regroup with time. The Santa started out as, started off as an uh, enforcer gang for the cartel, the Gulf Cartel. All former soldiers with military training. From explosives to intel to, I mean, you name it. The DEA described them as being the most advanced, technolog technologically advanced, violent group. You see? I didn't stop. <laughs> Unlike any other cartel, the Setas did not, not buy alliances or help with no one. They pretty much tortured you know, hung their victims from bridges. They, they, they did. They did some pretty crazy, crazy stuff. I'm talking about. This is when the whole cartel made a whole different. That lifestyle made a whole different jump to the point where, you know, it made you afraid to actually be part of something like that because of how how real it was getting and how fast it was happening. You know, people, you know, missing and. Yeah, end up over here, end up over there in barrels. I mean, you name it. It was, it was, it was a new time of very, very bad stuff happening, and the the setas were military style. So what they did is that they were taking control over territory by just pure fear and just taking everything out that they could from that area. You know, what I mean, like money wise and everything. You know, rival cartels actually had to adapt. To some of their violent tactics in order to be able to, to compete with what they were doing. Um, and uh, 2002, with approximately 300 members, the Seta set up their own, you know, operation and started, you know, getting to work. Um, and 2012, the Setas began, you know, experiencing. Uh, a power struggle and they ended up splitting up into two factions, uh, the Northeast Cartel and the Old School Setas. But it, it happened where like a lot of their leaders started getting locked up. A lot of the main, main, you know, the main, the original 31 founders started, you know, getting killed, going to prison and getting extradited. And it at one time, they, I mean, they held, their enterprise was like all over Mexico, all over Europe and and they were running business. They were very very, 
grew fast and and took over stuff just because of the the way they came in military style and taking everything but you know um like i said their name will never fade away and they did some pretty crazy stuff so you know uh yeah that's one of the cartels we covered today the set that's my name's jc hey stay in your lane don't judge nobody Live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live. Live it right, one life is all you need.